Hi there, welcome to Unscripted with me, Grace and Salame. Thank you so much for making time for us. Now today's show is a celebration of fatherhood. And let me begin by sharing this quote. By choice, we have become a family. First in our hearts and finally in breath and being. That's a powerful quote. And because our guest today is not your ordinary father, but an adoptive parent. And um, in a few minutes, we'll get to hear his story. So stay right there and welcome to Unscripted. Hi there, welcome to Unscripted. Thank you so, so much for making time for us. As always, I appreciate your viewership um, wholly and completely. And I hope you're staying positive, most important in this season, and of course, safe as well. Now with me, I feel like he's a man who needs no introduction, but he still does. This man is a husband, father, pastor, musician, author, aspiring politician, leader. You wear so many hats, Go Yodera. Thank you for coming on the show. Thank you for making time for me. Thank you, Grace. I thank, thank you. you for making time for me. No, yes. you're the one with all those hats. <laughs> so I'm privileged to be, you know. Evidently, I'm not wearing any of them. I see. Yes. <laughs> Um, but thank you. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Um, how are you doing in this new normal season? I'm doing, I'm actually doing great. Yeah? Yes, yes, yes. Fantastic. I'm actually doing great. And this is not cliche more. So, yeah, because yeah, I mean it I'm, for real. Like, uh, how are yeah. you doing for real, for real? I'm actually for real, for real. I'm doing good. First of all, how does one person wear so many hats? How did all that come to be part of who Gobi is? I think, I think it's the myriad of opportunities that come to, to one's life at a certain time. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it's, you know, the time that chooses you uh, mm -hmm. when the opportunity comes. Uh, let me give you like music. Uh, growing up in church, yeah. uh, I was involved in music a lot. And, uh, he was one of the guys. So we went to the same church. Yes, and yes, And we yes. all looked up to, oh, one day. <laughs> we all had crushes, those dimples. <laughs> So it's an honor, really, to be here. Ah, <laughs> so, so, but anyway, in, in that context, yeah. you know, um, music was happened a big thing, uh, happened at that time. Okay. And uh, we go in studios recording and, you know, have music concerts to promote the music. Got it. Uh, and we'd be invited in different places. And so, yeah, that's how the music became Happened. a big part of it. And in family-wise, because your brother as well, Peter Dara, is yes, a musician Yes, he's today. a musician. So actually, so he's the, the family. one who exposed that. Uh, by the way, it's uh -huh. not my brother. It's my elder sister who was like the She champion. was my music teacher. She was your Mr. teacher. Mr. Dara. Yes. Imagine. Yes, yes. So yes. it really is in the family. It's, it is. It is. Look at that. Yep. And then how did the rest come to be? Um, Pastor Goey... Um, writing your book, how did those come to be? And I'm, should I dare say, do you have one that's most dearest to your heart? Is that even a fair question? I think, I think the general thing, if you look about it thematically for me, yeah. if it's anything, it's about engaging and interacting with people. Oh, really? And so for me, that has been that's my joy. Route. That's, that's the thread that, that goes through all the things that I've been involved in. Um, it. It's being working with people, or my reflection of working with people. Got it. And so, uh, and so, if, if there's something that you could say has been my joy, is interacting and engaging with people. Oh, fantastic! Yes. yes. Um, so, speaking of interacting and engaging with people in a time of a pandemic, mm. Corona, where that is sort of challenged or yeah. put to test. Mm -hmm. um, I'm curious to know, as a church leader, as a pastor, in this season, how do you still pastor? The primary way we have been socialized about being in a setting like a church or mm -hmm. is Community. gathering. Yes. Is gathering. So yeah. now when this has taken away, we've had to redefine what that means. Mm. Um, for many churches, those that have had the capacity to do that have gone digital. Yes. But I'd like to imagine a majority of the churches in Kenya don't have that access. Yeah. So what does church mean to them? You don't need a pastor. The church is the body. A church is the body. We, ours is to shepherd, to yeah. point you to a particular point, and that is 
uh, and that is, is, is the Lord. And so ours is to point you in that way. And I think in many ways, yeah. uh, what, what the place of grow your faith in, uh, in fear and in trembling, That's true. you know, and all, this, is what, this is where the rubber meets the road. Indeed. You don't need your pastor in that sense. Mm. The pastor is just there to shepherd and to guide you. Uh, and, and again, I also need to take care of myself. That's true. I have to take care of me too. That's and so the other places, is how can I take care of myself Good. and invest on myself? Good. But at the same time, I am there for those uh, who, who need, but I also reach out uh, okay. to many of the people who, unfortunately, during this time, we've had members of our congregation who have been bereaved. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, right. and, and friends and that, where I've had to play the role, you know, of um, comfort of course. Uh, and, and leadership in that. I've had the privilege of doing weddings too. You have? Oh, yes. Please explain to me how a wedding happens and how has it been, the reality Very of it. small. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no crowds. You don't have hundreds. No, and... a small laptop or camera there beaming to the relatives on Zoom and really? all that. Yeah, and we have, you know, a few people. Not more wow. than seven, eight people in a place. One I, we had out in a garden, another we had in a lounge. Look at uh, that. Right there. I, I actually tell, you know, young, young couples who are planning to get married, get Do married it now. now. Do it now. Save. <laughs> you <laughs> save the money right now. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What would you tell that person who, for them, um, none of us plan for this, of course, but it's, it's difficult and they can't see tomorrow. They don't know maybe what they will eat or even how they'll make rent or even could be a worst case scenario. What can you tell them in this moment, Goey? <laughs> you tried to tell them to put on my pasta hand. No. Yes. <laughs> Thank you for so, picking that up quickly. <laughs> Let's move right along. <laughs> <laughs> Never waste a moment. No. <laughs> then we'll go to the father hat in a bit. There is a story, and I had this. This is not, not a reflection I had, but a yeah. neighbor of mine who's a pastor, yeah. I heard him speak about this uh, yeah. on Sunday. And he, he says, and, uh, and allow me to use this. He, okay. um, I was actually going to put this on Instagram. Hey. Nah, nah, Exclusive nah, you got, here. Got it here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, and the, the reflection is, there was a point in, in the book of, of uh, First Samuel, I think First Samuel chapter 30, yeah. where, uh, for those who don't know um, uh, what it is in the Bible, David had just come from battle. Yeah. Um, and he went back to his safe, safe home, safe mm -hmm. space. Mm -hmm. But he found it was called Ziklag. It had been ravaged by a marauding army called the Amalekites. Mm. And, uh, and when he got there, the people who were in his own army yeah. uh, were also affected. They found the camp and the homes had been burnt down. Uh -oh. the, 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 the families had been you know, kidnapped and mm. taken. I mean, it was a mess out there. Mm. And they, they came and started arguing and saying, we followed you, David. Mm. You know, and they now wanted it's to. It's your fault now. It's your fault. And yeah. they wanted to turn on David. Yeah. And it said that David, you know, was, was, uh, uh, was actually discouraged. But it said he found encouragement in the Lord. And let me explain this. There are four voices that go on in your head. Mm. The first voice is the voice of who we call the enemy, the one who comes to steal, kill, and, and to destroy. destroy. Yeah. And that's what the agenda is, all right? And that's, that's, that's the kind of voice that we're always, that we'll hear a lot. Then there's another voice, all right? And that's a, a, a voice of others. Okay. And that's a voice of others that are play. Some could be good voices, others could be negative. Around David at that time, even his own boys, the guys who were here, were up against him. Mm. Then there's a third voice. And there's a voice that is your internal voice, okay? Yeah. But that internal voice is two ways, right. all right? Because it's affected well, by... It's affected by outside, yeah. but you're the one who controls it. True. This inner voice can also work for you or also against you, mm. okay? And there's a fourth voice, and that's the voice of God. At play, at this point, yeah. David, the story goes on, went and inquired of the Lord what he would, would do, mm. and God showed him. Yeah. Mine is to be able to say, recognize these four voices at play in your lives. That's deep. All right? And figure out which one. You should listen to. You should listen to and lead you to the person God has called you to be. 
Amen. There ends my story. Amen. Amen. Look for the lesson in everything and listen to the right voice. Yes. Thank you for that take home. Yeah. So like I mentioned, we're celebrating you today as mm. a father. Mm. Thank um, you. Congratulations. I feel like I haven't spoke to, spoken to you or seen you since yes. Yes. fatherhood. Mm -hmm. um, so we start, how is fatherhood for you, Goey? Before how it came to be, how are you finding it? Well, being a father <laughs> is a privilege. It is. It is. It's a joy. And it is hard work. Yeah. <laughs> but it's a great honor. In fact, why I say it's a great honor is I share the yeah. title father with God my father. Trust Gobi to just be this deep. <laughs> <laughs> but do, do take us to the beginning, um, your journey to fatherhood. I saw yes. a talk you gave not too long ago. Yes. And it was titled The Baby Whisperer. And I was like, ah. oh, wow. Yeah. I want to hear more about this story. Yes. How did you get that title? I, I actually didn't get that title. You oh, know, you those didn't. I gave myself that title. I see. I've had the joy of and privilege of investing in many people's lives. Got it. Um, uh, and, and, and it's, it's very, very, very um, humbling to be able to see that 0.00001% that you've put in somebody's life of and how they have turned out. And so in many ways that has, that, that has added impetus to my personal journey of being a father in itself and so I, 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 I recognize and I don't take it for gr granted um, the role I have played okay. uh, some in some places almost like a father to some people yes you have you yes. have been even yes. without knowing it like I said we all looked up to you growing up so I can witness or bear witness to that and thank you thank you for allowing of yourself to be an example to many of us thank you we will take a short break now. When we come back, we hear more about your journey to fatherhood. So stay right there. Go wash your hands and come back quickly. We'll be right back. Um, welcome back. Thank you for staying with us. Um, Pastor Going or Mr. Goey. I don't know what to call you. Mr. Goey or Dara Goey. Um, just before the break, you were talking about just your mentorship journey and mm. uh, impacting many lives. Yeah. Sort of, I guess, gave you the desire um, for fatherhood. I, I was privileged to have a close relationship with my father, especially in my adult age. That's good. And so, growing up, I, I didn't interact with my father much. I see. Um, but actually, I got to start knowing my father once I finished. Uh, university college and all that. Really? Yeah. Was this and, intentional and he had, and or re just retired. Life? Circumstances. Circumstances. Circumstances that happened. So when he retired, okay. you know, uh, um, we 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 just would meet and uh, would meet every Friday for lunch. Oh, that's good. Every week. Like like clockwork, you would. Clockwork meet. would meet. Fantastic. And if I was not in town or out of the country, yeah. would make up. That, that the so would meet regularly, talk about anything and everything That's in amazing. itself. And one of the things that I was privileged to, to get to know my father before he passed on was he always used to talk about his failures to me. Really? Yes. Oh, wow. In fact, he never used to tell us work, at least for me, it's not work hard. He says, do your best. That's do it. your best at what you do. And, and, uh, and, and for that, I'll be proud of you once you do your best. If you can prove to me that you've done your best, you've done everything that you can that's to do your amazing. best, then that, that's fine. I, I think for me that gave me my confidence and high words. I wasn't good in the sciences at all. Yeah. When we used to have Parents' Day, you know, when the camp... You were shaking. No, I, I'll, I'll never shake with my father. I would see the way other kids would shake. Oh, wow. But my, my father, I'll tell my, my dad would know I was not good in the sciences. Math, 
physics, biology, biology, yes. I was not good in that. In that. And so when we'd but go... he was aware of your strengths and he, he was... He was aware of my strengths. That's the beauty about it, That's you know. And, and, and he was there. My father came for every single rugby game when I played for the school rugby team. Look at that. Every. He was there. You know, he'd come for the thing, he just come, and he just, immediately the game is over, I would turn and I could see my father there. He'd wave at me and I'd salute, and, we'd, and, we'd, and he'd go. We'd not even talk, but he'd be there yeah. for the game. He used to ask for the schedule. Oh, bless. That was amazing about my father. I never knew why, but now I know why. That was very important. His presence very affirmed good. who I was. I remember when I eulogized him, um, I, 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 during the, the, the funeral, mm. I, um, I did what others don't do. What did you do? I talked about his weaknesses uh -huh. because that's what he always did. So I talked about oh. his weaknesses and his struggles. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of his, his uh, friends came back to me and, uh, and told me, he found me, he's like, I'm glad your father had the courage to tell you Share about his with you. weaknesses with you. And he says, I wish I had that with my son. I was looking, I was like, man, you're like 80 years old telling me this now wow. about you and your son. I was like, well, I didn't know that my father being vulnerable with me yeah. helped in me getting to have a good relationship with him, but also wanting me to have children of my own eventually. But, but also how did that impact you as a man, having your father be vulnerable before you and there's that aspect and also him being there for you in your important moments. How did those things that he did impact you as a man today? See, my father never necessarily showed emotion. Mm. So, well, most African dads. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but there are times when I saw my father cry. Oh, One of the ones is when his father died, my grandfather. I, see. I remember us getting a phone call and my, my grandfather had been unwell. I see. And so it's those times when you know it's time, yeah. but you're never prepared for the death you're of never, a parent. Never. And so I remember when he put the phone down, I had a sob. And I, I remember because I was getting prepared for school. Mm. I was in primary school, I remember. And I was getting prepared for school and I turned. I was my first time to ever see my father cry. And uh, he just turned around and he just said, my father is dead. And I sat with him by the bed and we cried. My father's vulnerability made me more confident about... Your who, vulnerabilities. Not just my vulnerability, who I am. Got it. You know, you take it and, and you leave it. This is, this is who you are. Uh, this is who I am. And, and, and that way, it wasn't about impressing the things, of people. Um, accept me as I am. Accept me as I am. I'm a loud guy. I can, you know, sometimes I can come out as braggadocious for those who know me. <laughs> I've not seen that side. But do I say? Do I say? Do I say? You know? Imagine you know? I'm here to see that side. Uh -huh. um, uh, I can also be extremely uh, assertive. I can be intimidating to people. Um, and so in, in many ways, that's just who I am. Got it. Okay. Um, tempered, I hope, I hope sometimes no? okay. when I need it, okay. when it needs to be. But in essence, that is what was embraced about me. And I really enjoyed uh, my, my interactions with my father, especially now, you know, as an adult. As an adult, I did. I think that the, the sad thing was he never got to see our children, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, he never got to see our children. And that's, that's, that's the sad thing that we okay. would, would have. And, and again, in uh, a couple of days, I mean, if he was alive, he yeah. would be, uh, would he be 90 years old today? Wow. If he was alive today, he would be 90 oh, years. Yes. He'd be turning 90 years old this, this end of this, end of this month. Wow. Yes. End of this month? End of this month, yes. It will be my dad's 10th anniversary since his passing. Yes. And I went through the same, I wish he met my children. Yes. Um, but... Yeah, God makes no mistakes. No, nope. he, no he mistakes, knows why. right. He knows why. Yes. And I think in many ways, at least for me, I see him through my kids in one yes. way or another. Yes. Maybe I force it, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but I'd like to believe that legacy. 
still continues. Do you know your father taught me how to make a fair? Uh, really? Yes. How even? Yes. And you I'm know, we grew up. On... We grew up not far from him. Yeah? Yes, in Woodley. In Woodley, yes. So we do. We do, yes. we do our father. So there were those older guys, eh? Older guys, and so, I mean, he taught me how to make a fair. And we used to do that. So those are some of my fond memories about your father. And he used to invite us into the radio, the, the radio, radio station. station. Oh, look at that. So, so nice just having him. You know, were those guys you used to look up to. Oh, Tony, man. Tony. Oh, we'll have this off camera. I <laughs> got me all mushy. But thank you for sharing that. Yes, yes, um, yes. But like I just mentioned, um, one thing is he didn't meet your children. Yes. So tell me how... Um, the journey to you being a father happened in terms of when did you decide to try for children? Mm -hmm. How did it happen? Because mm -hmm. yours is not the conventional way. You went mm -hmm. the adoption route. We, we got married. Um, uh, in, uh, I was uh, in my mid-30s at that time. I see. Oh my gosh, I'm so old now. And so <laughs> That's in the past. <laughs> yes, in the past, right? <laughs> oh, we're told... To this year, we don't count it because yeah, yes, 2020. 2020 we shouldn't count oh. it because we've been spending our days indoors. <laughs> but anyway, got married in my mid thirties, high and early thirties, and so, and so at that particular point, you know, as we, as when we got married, one of the things was like, you know, let's give it maybe a year or two before we start trying, uh, for for that. And so, but again, we were not necessarily trying to get pregnant. We just knew. Once we, we, we start trying, we should continue. And uh, one year, mm -hmm. two years, mm -hmm. three years, four years, five years. Of trying. Yeah, six years. We're like, well, what's, what's going on? You know, so we, we sought medical, you know, assistance, you know, um, say what's going on. We are, you know, tried this and that. Mm. And we're not necessarily... Um, fortunate uh, to, to, to be able to conceive. Yes. And so, so by the time we had reached um, almost yeah. about eight years into the marriage, um, this was getting um, kinda, kinda stressful for us. Within the African context, you are defined mm. more so about your ability to reproduce. And it's much harder for uh, for the for the woman. That's true. You know, you are known as Mama Nani. I'm telling you. you know. Just today, someone was asking me for a phone number. Uh -huh. She asked me, what's her name? I was like, I call her Mama Seth. Uh -huh. I'm not sure what her name is. Uh -huh. So you're right. You're yes. defined as... You're defined, you know. Uh, your, your children or your is your wealth. Yes. In, in as much as it was, we really struggled trying to be able to get children of our own. Mm. It, it actually was, was even harder simply because as a pastor's the role, ours was always to go for baby dedications. Imagine. Who de dedicates babies? You. Yeah. So we, we, we had to be in one place happy. Imagine. Then you go home and... And, you know... Deal with... Exactly. Let's take a short break. So stay right there. I know you want to hear this. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Thank you for staying with us. Um, so, Gowi, you were before the break mm -hmm. telling us um, how it was to be a pastor and dedicate children, I'm sure speak hope into their lives, mm -hmm. and go back home and want your own. Yes. And what would happen? You, you were telling us what comments that would come to you. Yeah, some comments would be, you know, some would be insensitive, others would be ignorant. I see. You know? And so... Uh, I think the the what thing. Can you um, if you're comfortable sharing. No, no, it's yeah. it's 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 all right. It's all right. Um, what, one one of the comments were: Why isn't your wife getting pregnant? Is she, is she, you know, checking out her figure? Uh, yeah. yeah. Like they would bluntly. Ask they bluntly. Wow. Bluntly ask me that. You know, you have to be gracious. Extremely. You know, extremely gracious. I mean, you are their pastor. Wow. <laughs> you know. Um, yes. Harder for you. You're right. Your yes. response has to be good. Yes. And I would say, well, uh, children are from the Lord. That's 
true. That's what Perfect I, I, I that's yeah. how I do that, which is true. It's true. You know. And um, there would be others. I think the thing that we, we and for us that, that I did, and this was even before my father died, he asked me, do you know there are other ways mm. oh, your father, to have children? Your father said this? My father said this. Did he know of, he was alive while you were trying? Yes, he was. Ah, he was, he, he was. Passed. Yes, 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 he was. He, oh, wow. he died about a year and a half before our, I see. our, our, our first child came home oh, I but, see. but here's the thing he we actually had started talking about adoption even before we got married is that so yes it was part of the plan it was always part of the plan so adoption was not a you know an That's alternative uh, and this is the thing Th there's a heritage about adoption in my family one my grandfather mm -hmm. was adopted no way yes my grandfather survived a smallpox epidemic. Okay, you talk about that, epidemics. Right? Yes, <laughs> he survived a smallpox e epidemic in the late 1800s. I see. And he was adopted by a family. Wow. Okay? Okay. My mother uh -huh. was a social worker working within the adoption services of the government. Oh, look. So as I was growing up, my mother would take me and all of our, uh, the rest of us kids, but me most of the time, because I was the younger one, I really liked, you know, going for these, these visits. Yeah. So I joined my mom when we'd visit children's homes. As a caseworker, she used to go and see this child who has been, you know, abandoned, or this child whose entire family probably has died, mm -hmm. or something of that sort, and so, and placing them into adoptive homes. And I'd go with my mom. I didn't understand what adoption was then, yes. but what my mom was doing was making children happy and adults happy. So that was part of parcel. And so when I did share with my father how we were struggling yeah. about, he reminded, you of that. he reminded me not just about my mom, mm. but about a story I did not know. This I got really? to know, yeah. I mean, yeah. maybe a year or two before my father passed on, you yes. know. And he was saying that, you know, your grandfather was adopted, you know. My wife was not, she, she was not against adoption. Mm -hmm. She just wasn't ready. Yeah. And you know, they're, they're, and I think there's the, a mental state you have to be in, and it's a journey you need to be able to get to. Yeah. And there are particular questions you need to be able to have answered as an individual yeah. when you're doing the adoption option in itself. Yes. One of the questions is, how will this child be received? Mm. You know, okay. how you deal with the questions that have always been uh, being asked, you know? I mean, we didn't see you guys pregnant. Exactly. And now you have how a child. Do you, you know, how do you answer those questions? Yeah. All right? Another question that we also have been asking is, how will the rest of the extended family, you know, receive? receive? Now, how was that? for us, it was, it was great. You know, for us, it was like, you know, at least for my side of the family, it's like, Yo. Especially after that heritage. Yeah, yo, what's, what's the deal, man? <laughs> Bring as many kids as you want, you know? Um, the other questions we'd be able to ask, and these were questions we couldn't answer for ourselves, you know, of what happens now after we adopt. Mm. You know, there's the fear of what if the biological parents come? And also, do you into tell the, play? the child or do you not? Do you tell the child when do or you not? you tell them and when? Those yes. How will they respond to exactly. you and all that? Exactly. And we and, and for us who are able to have those answers answered for ourselves. Good. You know. Before you adopt. Yes. I had those answers well before. Oh wow. Well before. So Again, ready. because I was ready. I was ready before. I see. I was ready before we got married. So tell me the, the journey to adoption. Um, yes. the many adoptive parents yes. that I've heard speak that I know mm -hmm. and they always say it's actually not us who pick the child. The child, the picks child us. is the one who picks you. Is that the Absolutely. same? Absolutely. Really. So the how child did it is the one who picks you. How did you meet your child? Uh, so, so what what happens is is um, there there are two ways to be able to ad adopt. You either go the public way through the the government, yeah. uh, and they have an adoption service that they have through the Child Welfare Society, right. or they are private. They are legally. <coughs> um, registered adoption agencies. So there are a number of them. So we went the private way. Okay. 
Okay, so there was a, a, a we went and you know we went to an ado a, an adoption agency and we said we wanted, and they asked us, so what child do you want? Like boy, girl, age. boy, girl, age, and all that. We ah. said the youngest, yes. the better for us, Fantastic. and the reason for us is we want to go grow with a child through all the milestones. Yeah. And again, where we were, we felt we were in the position to be able to to give care to to infants at that point. And you were okay with boy girl or you had a preference? For, I had a preference for a boy. I see. I really wanted a boy. And mommy? Uh, she was open. Okay. At that time she was open, you know. A child is a child would be child able to do that. And the reason why I wanted a boy and, and maybe that is why I think if this is divine, mm. is that many boys mm. are not adopted. Oh, that's true. Yes. Is it because of the laws or no. people just prefer This is a cultural thing about mm. us. We Africans, and I know that in the case of Kenya, people don't want to adopt boys simply because um, the cultural thing is that yeah. this child is not of this place. And so when they grow older, they'll want to come and inherit things, usually land and all the positions that you, that you have. So it seems like having a girl is easier yes. or more acceptable. And here, can I be even more candid? Please. The, the girls are the ones who are adopted first. Yeah. Light skin, yellow, yellow, mandazi, brown. That's what they look for. That's what people are looking for. Yes. We just said, you know, don't let us know anything else about that. This is what we want a boy. The youngest you can do. And, um, and, and so we said, just go, go look for the boy. Yeah. Yeah. Find within all the homes in Kenya, whichever you have a network with, if there's a okay. child. Uh, and they found a, a boy. Nice. Yes. How and old? so, and uh, he, at that point, he was six months. Now, the government, the law allows for a child who, at the time of birth or that age, you cannot find a family or any next of kin and all that, that the kid is open for adoption from six months. Okay. The adoption agency screens you. You know, you go through a thorough screening. To see if your parents, are, these parents are fit. No, for, just uh, to see if you are legit as the parent. Yes, what I'm saying, are the parents fit to take this baby? Exactly. Got it. And then the government does a screening for you. So this is through child services. They also do screening. It's so a you're, process, you're, huh? It is a process. So okay. we also had to go through an orientation. Uh, from the children's home that we had. And so at that point, uh, once you find and they find a match for you, yeah. and I'm not sure what they do about finding matches and all that, but once we're able to do that, uh, we ended up uh, being able to be introduced to the boy. Uh, when we met, we met him in the, uh, the children's home. How was that moment? Wow, that moment was... Wow. 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 It was an awesome moment. Out of body, your heart exploding, all of it, all of it. I'm, I'm speechless. I, I can't even express to you, Grace, what, what that moment is. I don't have the words. Yeah. I, and, and just meeting, meeting him and him meeting us, you know, those big brown eyes, him looking at us, you know, yeah. and uh, us getting to meet him. I, I remember, you know, just saying, hi, my name is Gowie. He's just looking at me. I was with now my wife, you yeah. know. This is your new mommy, your new daddy. And the orientation with the child, we have several days of getting to be familiar with the child before we can take the child home. So okay. we were there. Yes, and acclimatized to both of us. And then we eventually brought him home. How was that? From a house waiting to hear the... It's a pattern of feet to, you have a child in your home. We didn't know. We don't know, we don't know what, what it means to expect. You know, you have a child here now. You know, like, there, there was no manual. There's no manual. You learn There's on no the manual. job. <laughs> you know, so you learn on the job. So mm -hmm. here you have a child and uh, being able to learn the child, you know, being able for the child to ad adjust to your own routines mm -hmm. and stuff. It has been a privilege and honor getting to see and, and getting to know this. Uh, this, 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 this young boy, you know, in my head I call him the general. What does that mean to you now, being a parent? I think now the honor is more apparent. The responsibility is even greater now that you have these children in your hands. The responsibility of who they will be in the future. Yeah. 
how you speak into their lives, uh, what you, how you'll shape what their lives will look like, giving them a solid foundation to make the right choices. Yeah. And mistakes. And allowing them to make mistakes. Yes, you're right. Yeah. And I think for me as a father, yeah. I think each day I am grateful to God for giving me this privilege and honor um, to raise these children because uh, the Bible tells us that their children are a gift from God. We are only but That's stewards yes. of what God or who God gives us. In a couple of years, these children will be grown and out of the home, yeah. you know, uh, and I hope that in these times that the Lord allows me to be with these, that I would have impacted great wisdom, mm. giving them whatever insights, but more so giving them a good foundation to thrive um, in whatever opportunities that come out their way. Um, my, my, when, you know, when people in the neighborhood pass, you know, my, my child says, good to see you. Oh, that's, wow. that's me. You know, that is so cute. that's me. The little one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, how are you? Good to see you. <laughs> yeah. This story is like telling a kid. Yeah. A whole grown man. A, a whole grown, <laughs> yes. <he's> just like, <laughs> I said, this, this is, oh, this is me. <laughs> so, so I'm, I'm, I'm seeing, that's they lovely. see more that's true. than they hear more. You know, so they, they model what they see. And so I, my hope, my prayer is that mm -hmm. I can be as consistent as possible okay. and that they will see who I am. And when they grow older yeah. and get to know my own failures uh, and my own shortcomings, yeah. that I'll have the courage and the humility to, to walk them through that. I think people, people greet me with two hands now. I <laughs> Like, yeah, cool. Baba, 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 Baba. You know, like no, but it's true, man. You know, you say, uh, uh, Baba, yeah, Baba. I was like, so this is what it means. You know, you get, re, you get some hesh, <laughs> some respect over here from, from God. I mean, that's the thing, you know. You know, usually me and my girl, yo, what's up? <laughs> yes. Now you're like, oh, there's an honor to this. There's an honor to it. It's something I did not expect. You know, people see you differently. You're received and seen different. Yes. Happy Father's Day. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you, Grace. And we wish you all the best. Thank you. Our love to the children, our love to mommy. Yes. Um, and God's blessings. And keep Thank you. pouring on to every, every one of us. Thank you. We appreciate you, Goey. Thank you. And we appreciate you at home, all the fathers watching. Um, happy Father's Day. Whenever this, like I said, we're celebrating Father's Day all through the month of June. So happy Father's Day. We celebrate you, dads. Keep being present. Presence is the key. And just do your best and be real. Be yourself. I think that's a big take-home from Goey um, today. So wherever you are, stay well, stay safe. God bless and see you next week.